Okay, in my last video, we talked about the possibility of future job loss in the cybersecurity field, specifically as penetration testers or bug bounty hunters or cybersecurity analysts. Is the position declining? And from the data, what I basically could gather was it's staying about the same. And there was a little bit of debate down in the comments. So I decided to do a follow up video that I think will shed quite a bit of light on the future of cybersecurity and the potential of job loss. And I think it's actually some pretty good news. The reason there was some debate is because the data that I was able to find is not always the most accurate or helpful because data companies, they just collect a bunch of information and then they put it in a chart and say, here you go. And what tended to happen was basically Basically, if you work for any company like LifeLock, Norton, McAfee, they basically just said if you work at the front desk, but you're at a cybersecurity or an online security company. So basically, if it's security and it has something to do with the internet, that job counts. So even if you answer the front desk phone at a company like McAfee, then that is a cybersecurity position. And they were showing a projection of growth in the future. But we decided, like, is that actually true? Because if you're answering the front desk phone, or maybe you are just an electrician who works at that company, you're not really technically a cybersecurity researcher. Yes, you work at a company who has something to do with the internet and security, but that doesn't necessarily make you a cybersecurity position or a role. So I decided to do a little more digging and the information I found I think will be really helpful and encouraging to a lot of you, especially those of you who were really struggling with the data, knowing that it was kind of manipulated by those who put it out. And so I was kind of just trying to guess on the future, but with this information that I'm about to show you, I think it'll be quite encouraging and beneficial. Okay, so here's the graph. And if you look at the orange line here, you see that it's uh, all HackerOne valid bugs that were found each year. Uh, HackerOne makes all this information public, except for the year 2023, I wasn't able to find 2023. So I kind of just plugged it in between 2022 and 2023, assuming because in 2022, to 2024, there's such a huge gap that it probably went up also. But 2023, I wasn't really sure, so I just kind of plotted it there in the middle. But then for the blue line, that is all valid CVEs that were found each year. And there's a drop in 2025 because we're not done with the year. But kind of looking at the trend, we're already higher than we were in the year 2023 for new zero-day vulnerabilities that have been found. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that for this year, we're probably going to be really close to the same number of new CVEs we were found in 2024 to 2025. So the good news on this is that the vulnerabilities keep climbing, I guess, if you want to think that's good news for those of us who work and love the field of cybersecurity, the vulnerabilities are continuing to go up. So that is both for the CVEs, which a lot of penetration testers, you're going to be using CVEs when you come across old outdated software. And then also for everybody else who loves to do uh, web application penetration testing or bug bounties, you have the applications seem to be uh, getting more vulnerable. And there is some ways that people will say, well, there's just more people doing bug bounty hunting and therefore the vulnerabilities are going up. You know, that, that can be true, but if there's only 10 available bugs, whether you have 100,000 people searching for bug bounties or you have 100, there's only 10. So you're not going to find more than there are. But I do understand the logic in saying more bug bounty hunters, more vulnerabilities. And that logic is still okay because if there's enough vulnerabilities that they keep going up, the field of cybersecurity is not going to die. And so even if the job postings seem to be staying, you know, pretty steady, the vulnerabilities are continuing to increase and I don't see this dropping anytime soon. And the reason I say that is because before the year 2022, which is the reason I made this graph. So you see 2022 is the little, there's a little bit of a drop in bug bounties that were found. And I was actually pretty interested in that because 2022 is when OpenAI put out ChatGPT and people were worried they were going to start losing jobs. Software developers were going to start losing their jobs. And in reality, the bugs continue to climb. And so that's actually a good sign that AI is not gonna be weeding out cybersecurity. The new CVEs that are coming out continue to increase, which means the field for penetration testing is most likely not gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. I have a theory on why that is. And before the year 2022, before there was any AI, I actually worked with some software engineering students who were going to college, so college students focusing on software engineering. And I tutored them and tried to help them learn how to code. And then I also worked with students after the year 2022. And what I can tell you is before the year 2022, you really had to know what you were doing because you need to be able to do your homework and then also pass the test in order to pass, pass the class. Now you can kind of just use AI to do all of your homework, make sure you get good grades there. And as long as you get a D on the test, 
the homework and the tests are kind of going to balance out and you're going to get a C and you're going to be able to graduate. I personally think that one of the reasons the vulnerabilities continue to go up is because software developers who are graduating from universities now are not as good as they were before. They can use AI to get the code, then they just kind of copy paste it and they don't know what they're doing when they're implementing it. So it's going to be a little while, I personally think, before AI is at a place where it's actually implementing code and the chances are that it's totally doing everything on its own is probably never. And the smarter the AI gets, most likely the worse the developers are going to be. So the implementation is going to be done poorly. And so these new developers are going to be making mistakes and I could go on from here, but we'll go ahead and call it good. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comments. I really enjoy seeing them. Thanks for watching.